All right. Uh, welcome back. Let's proceed. We were talking about how to exercise our spiritual authority, and we looked at a few terms that can be applied. And uh, now we look at other ways. One is to issue commands with all these words like destroy, remove, um, bind, lose. So we are releasing our authority by these words. Now, other things, prayer. Prayer and intercession. So that's what I, I shared even in the context of corporate, um, you know, spiritual warfare. Prayer and intercession is so very helpful. So we need to engage in that. And um, we can see results uh, when there is a prayerful, first of all, prayer and prayerful atmosphere. Uh, I, I don't know if any of you has experiences but i have sometimes when you go to let's say you know visit a, a church community or something you feel god's presence in that area but if you go to other parts of the city it's very different and then like you can almost tell the difference because th this community is a praying community so uh, not that demons won't be active demons are there everywhere but you can also Understand that God's presence is also established in a powerful way. So that is the, the power of prayer and intercession, where we have uh, praying communities. We, we can experience the victory of God, even in the atmosphere. You know, sometimes we can tell. Uh, and which is why, even when it comes to our homes, so if we can have prayer in our homes, family prayer, time together, worship, whenever every family has its time uh, but these things are so powerful that god's presence can be established right so that is one thing now prayer and intercession uh, in our struggle against the enemy so when we pray when we intercede um, god's power works you remember the example of daniel okay when uh, demonic spirits were interfering with the answer that God was sending to Daniel, what happened? Daniel was praying. Daniel was fasting. Sometimes we are fasting and praying. How does it help? Then God sent his angel. The angel went and fought with the principality. And then the answer actually came through. So there is a role that prayer plays in spiritual warfare. So we need to pray. So to overcome demons, we must pray. As we pray, as we intercede, we will exercise our authority. And scriptures tell us, pray for all the saints, right? all kinds of prayers. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 6, what do we read about in Ephesians chapter 6? We went through the last few classes. Anyone? Yeah, spiritual armor, spiritual armor. So parts of the armor. We have, uh, you know, a helmet of salvation, breastplate, shield, belt, shoes. All these are parts of the spiritual armor. But in verse 18, it also says, pray for all the saints. So in a way, think about this. Paul is talking to the Ephesian church about how to overcome the devil. And he says, to overcome, you should have armor. But in the same continuation, he says, pray for everybody, which also means that prayer is also part of the weaponry against the devil. So if you want to overcome Satan, prayer, intercession will overcome the evil one. So we need that as a part of our warfare weapon. Uh, even in the case of uh, Peter, Jesus told Peter, I know Satan is planning something against you. Uh, but I have prayed for you that you should not fall, that you know your faith should be preserved. So how did Jesus protect his disciple from Satan's attack? What did he do? Prayer, right? So through prayer, we can even speak protection or we can ensure protection for our lives and our loved ones for our family, for our you know, church, or someone in church. Maybe we are ministering to that person. Pray for them. So when we pray for them, they will be able to overcome 
Satan will be able to overcome the enemy. Okay? So uh, prayer is so very useful. Prayer and intercession. And uh, yeah, we can overcome Satan through this. Yes. Next is righteous actions. Righteous actions. We talked about the breastplate of righteousness. So the breastplate of righteousness, what does it mean? It means two things. One is, I must believe that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What does Satan want us to believe about ourselves? Sinners, correct. That we are sinners. That we are condemned. We are guilty. He wants us to keep believing that. Because when we believe that, uh, our identity becomes faulty. That's not our identity. Now I am washed by the blood of Jesus. I am a child of God. I am sanctified. I am made righteous. So that is my identity. So we have been made righteous through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Second thing about righteousness is we have to walk in righteousness. Okay? So uh, I am righteousness, but what if I engage in sin? Is it helpful against the enemy? No, because I myself am what we say opening doors for the devil to work in my life. So it has to be both. Identity has to be correct, my understanding. Secondly, walk in righteousness. Don't walk in evil ways. Then also we can overcome Satan. We can overcome demonic powers. So keep doing what is right. And uh, Satan will get very irritated. Right? For example, uh, let's imagine you know, an office situation where uh, there are people who try to make you angry. They want you to get angry. They want you to, you know, uh, uh, shout and uh, sort of uh, be in rage. They are expecting that kind of a reaction from you. But what if you don't? What if, you know, you're cool as a cucumber, as they say, right? So you're very composed because you're trusting in the Lord. Even though you're irritated, you're still not, you know, losing your calm. Uh, and when you do that, what is happening? You're walking in God's righteousness. Isn't it? So when you're working in God's righteousness, there is somebody engaging in righteous actions. That is also like overcoming the devil. It's irritating the, to the enemy because he wants you to lose your calm. But here you are, you're working in trusting, trust in the Lord and forgiveness and patience and all the good virtues, the fruit of the spirit. Uh, that in itself is warfare. You know, it's like Joseph uh, in Egypt, who he did the right thing. That is spiritual warfare. Righteous person, having a righteous person is spiritual warfare in itself. Or Daniel, right? Daniel in, even in the lion's den, no problem. There's nothing that can actually harm him because God is on his side. So living, if you're a righteous individual, when we're walking in righteousness, it's automatic warfare against the devil. But in some situations, we have to intentionally involve in righteous actions as a warfare against the devil. I'll explain myself. Um, let's say in, uh, in a community, okay, there is a lot of financial, uh, like, you know, misdeed. People are doing the wrong thing financially. Now, as believers, if we are going to be um, wise with our money, if we are going to be generous with our money, if we are going to put our money into godly things, then that becomes spiritual warfare. Where everyone else is, is uh, maybe hoarding money. They're all keeping money and they're all uh, you know, doing it the wrong way. As believers, we decide, no, we will not engage in anything that is corruption. We will be true and righteous. We will be generous. That is warfare against the devil in that community. Because what is happening? All the believers now are doing the right thing as far as money is concerned. So in some places, when we see you know, a particular evil, 
we may have to decide that we will do the opposite that becomes spiritual warfare okay um maybe there is injustice in some places so we've seen this in history how uh, people are ill treated um you know on on the basis of uh, uh, their uh, ethnicity so many things have happened in history but let's say we are observing things like that but we do what is right we don't go by you know which uh, uh, ethnicity a person belongs to or what is their origin people are people all people are made in the image of god so we choose to treat everybody correct not like how others are doing it that becomes spiritual warfare so depending on the evil in that community as believers when we decide okay i will do the opposite of what others are doing i will do the righteous actions the enemy is actually experiencing an attack from you got it so things like that or uh, let's say something had been done in the past which is not good okay uh, maybe one particular set of people were ill treated uh, there have been i mean i have heard of stories where uh, uh, leaders like spiritual leaders of the community have gone and asked for forgiveness for something that happened in the past which was not correct okay to these people so when such things happen for example let's say uh, you know there is a there is a group that is very poor because injustice was done to them and they are poor and the spiritual leaders actually go and ask for forgiveness from those who were oppressed many years ago or you know a generation ago it will release up the power of god in a fresh new way because we are doing an action opposite to what satan has done right so all these things will also really make a big difference uh, and even at a community level so this is also spiritual warfare righteousness that we can engage in any thoughts about this any questions or Uh, yes, yes, please go ahead. Yes, I just make sure. So anytime we're doing action that is opposite of the devil, we are in um, warfare. Like you gave the example, um, treating people um, right, regardless of yes. race, whatever, what other people may be treating in a certain race, our mm. group of people different, but we're not, um, that's walking warfare. I guess anything that's opposite of the devil is mm. walking warfare. I just wanna make, I wanna make sure, is that, is that what you were saying? I wanna make sure I'm clear. Yes, that's that's exactly what I'm saying. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, what I'm saying is like counter trend. If the trend is, um, you know, the trend is downward, we go upward, and uh, in that way, we are setting God's standard in that community. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right. So. Sure. Now uh, we look at a uh, few more actions to engage in. Power of agreement. Power of agreement, as scripture teaches in prayer, we've learned when we pray together, we agree together. You know, that is strong, that is very powerful. And we can leverage that when it comes to warfare against Satan to pray with someone even when we are ministering we we can pray over them but there are times when we can pray with them in agreement and that can really help so uh, that is also something we can use and pray as a team pray corporately for warfare against uh, demons angels and engaging angels can also help because angels can war the demons so how to have more angelic activity we already discussed in the last class one is pray and ask god to uh, send his angels second is we can declare scripture because the angels heed the voice of the lord so when we declare scripture angels will do the work they'll start to uh, you know take action so that is also something we must look at and 
yeah in the bible there are many different kinds of angels there are examples given here in our notes we can go back and look at those examples like guardian angels what do guardian angels do they protect so uh, they might just protect you in different times uh, and uh, they might cover you from the harm that satan and the demons want to do to you so guardian angels there are messenger angels like gabriel right they come they give a message that this is what god wants to speak to you so there are messenger angels who can come to us there are uh, warring angels so we see them in the old testament they they come to engage in war okay uh, and that's their task so every category of angels has a task they so as we pray as we praise as we declare the word angels can actually start destroying the demons so it can happen because scriptures talk about warring angels okay? so there are warring angels there are also assisting angels those who will help us so god can send an angel to help us strengthen us okay guide us uh, and and all of those things so there are assisting angels so in spiritual warfare we can engage angelic assistance for that we need to pray and declare pray and declare so make that a part of uh, our practice okay so to pray and declare fine so angels and uh, the last section here is authority gateways what are authority gateways authority gateways are uh, the order of god god has uh, created an order in every setting so if we look at um, uh, any state or any nation we have government isn't it so we have government we have leaders and then you have different structures um, that oversee the activities of that particular place now if you take up an institution there is a leadership for the institution you know there are other people who are assigned responsibilities so that becomes the authority gateway so through the leaders of the institution god works if you take the church then pastor and leaders that is the authority gateway if you take a family then you know the father uh, father mother and then uh, the siblings so the uh, authority flows like that we have to respect that if you take a you know married couple then the husband is the authority husband over the wife so it flows like that now why are we trying to understand this you see those who are in authority we can exercise we can exercise um whatever we discussed on this on our sphere of influence now let's say i'm the leader of the church as a pastor i can bless i can speak protection i can speak you know god's intervention in people's lives it will be very powerful because that is how the authority flows more than can a believer pray for another believer yes we can but there is something about the authority structure when it goes in the order similarly for a family like if a parent prays for their children that's very powerful okay um, and similarly you know a husband can pray over his wife it's very powerful so these are all these are all structures that we must respect and uh, we must also use the influence appointed by god given by god to that uh, you know authority person in that circle okay so we see in first corinthians 7:14 we we've, we've read this earlier in the prayer chapter that in a family even if let's say uh, between a husband and a wife even if one person is an unbeliever there is going to be spiritual influence that one can exercise right so that tells us that our prayers are powerful as long as you are a believer prayers are powerful okay and we clarified last time also that this is in the situation that let's say you know uh, it's not like you should go looking for an unbeliever to marry but if for whatever reason that has happened then yes we can still 
exercise our influence in prayer and uh, yeah a husband can pray over his wife he can pray over the family a pastor can pray over the local church government leaders can have influence over the people uh, and uh, any team any group right whoever is the captain of the group carries some level of uh, spiritual authority to bless to lead well uh, and uh, you know all of that so authority gateways or structures so if a person is in a position of authority use the influence in a positive way we can use it in a positive way over the people and um if we let's say the leader is is walking in righteousness it will affect the people now let's say the leader is not walking in righteousness can that affect the people what do you think leader should be good leader should be um doing the right things you know praying the right things over the people now what if the leader has sin in their own lives what might happen hmm? see uh, we said the authority gateway is that authority flows from the head of that institution now if the authority struck authority person is good um if if you take for example a church and the pastor is a good pastor walking in righteousness there's a good influence on the people what if the pastor has um unrepentant sin in his own life then will that affect the people that's my question it'll yeah so that's correct so if the leader is not careful whatever weaknesses uh, we entertain as leaders we may find the same weaknesses in the people because it's like an open door so satan and his demons can enter they can affect uh, the leader's life and also the lives of all the others okay so that is a very like you know we we have to be so careful that we don't give any entrance to the enemy into our lives uh, as leaders or whatever position right even in the family um whoever is the leader we have to be very careful oh, pastor just a small question yes. but in some churches there is always a tendency where they keep finding faults with pastors you know <laughs> so the, how do you keep finding faults with pastors uh so, i'm i'm not saying pastors are not blameless but uh, just to uh, figure out you know okay yeah. this is what wrong this is how he reacted this is how he responded this is what he spoke And that type of a mindset it's like yeah yeah once again i'm just finding one scripture yeah it's first timothy 5 verse 19 where it says do not okay let me read nkjv yeah nkjv version do not receive an accusation against an elder except from two or three witnesses so the bible has uh, see uh, god respects the authority that he appoints so when it comes to accusation against a leader i'm not saying leaders are faultless they have their own weaknesses but if there is a serious accusation right uh, one thing that we are told is the way we approach it it will be little bit different now if it's someone else uh, even then i think matthew 18 has a ha, has a way like first you go speak to your brother try to resolve it if he doesn't listen then you go with you know some elders to talk about that matter so the bible gives us a pattern to follow when when we have an accusation against a person now when we have an accusation against an elder or a leader it says first of all we have to be very sure 
that's that's what it means do not um you know accept or do not receive an accusation that doesn't mean don't accuse them but it says you have to be sure you have to be very sure that there is a problem there's an issue and it says you need to have two or three witnesses so that again is telling us be very sure if there is a serious matter two or three of you are saying the same thing about the leader that means there is a problem okay now how do we address it the bible teaches us that also it has to be done in a different way because there's honor involved uh, you know towards the leader so you can't just address it a good way to do is to maybe have another elder go speak to the the pastor or or someone so that way uh, it it might be uh, you can still address the problem okay yeah uh, but i i think uh, thankfully in our today's culture at least here in bangalore what i i have seen here in our church we do encourage people to share feedback and uh, sometimes the feedback is uh, you know good many times there is feedback that is not easy to digest but there is that openness if you want to say something say it right uh, and to have a culture like that also is so helpful because we don't have to wait for something big to happen constantly we are getting feedback and you know we someone can just come up to you and say hey you know what you said i don't think that is accurate or something like that right so i i hope it addresses your uh, issue thoroughly all right okay so yes leaders have to be careful we need um, uh yeah and, and the other aspects of it is that when there is authority over our lives we also have to be in right submission to it okay then uh, god's power god's blessings will flow when we are in right submission to the authority uh, and if at all there is a problem with the authority then as a person who's under authority i can still protect myself i don't have to um you know have the weakness which my leaders have because you remember paul told timothy don't uh, let anyone look down on you because you are young you can be an example in word in deed in behavior in everything so just because there's a problem with our leaders uh, and uh, i can't say oh they are like that that's why i'm like this no i can take my own responsibility and shut the door on whatever activity is going on right i don't want that to touch my life i can still walk pure and still walk with integrity if i make up my mind and determine to follow the lord so these are some things that will really help us to walk strong with the lord uh, we'll take up some questions today and uh, then i think the rest of the chapters are more practical and we have sufficient time to complete it in the coming weeks mm, okay let me look at the questions here i'll go to prats question um am is there such a thing as a gift of intercession or ministry of intercession what are some biblical examples yes there is a ministry of intercession a good example is epaphras uh, in the new testament so you can read up a little bit about this person he was a minister together with paul and um, he was called to prayer he was called to intercession i hope that uh, addresses your question prat the second question that prat has how do we identify or discern if we have a ministry or of intercess of intercession or prayer so we may sense that we are being stirred up more and more to pray or uh, we are receiving uh, if you would like to call it like burdens from the lord in our hearts and we feel like okay i need to make time to pray that could be an indicator that god wants us to spend more time in prayer and intercession so you can begin there and i'm sure the lord will lead you uh, okay shani i'll just let you talk i know you posted something here in the chat but i didn't quite get the meaning of that uh, yeah please go ahead yeah my question is when you say we have to have the right submission to authority Like, I think I kind of know what you mean, but can you explain that? Can you give me an example? Yeah. 
So right submission to authority means, um, see, we have, we have uh, the teachings. Uh, Apostle Peter, if we read his writings, the epistles that Peter wrote, he talks about how one must behave with, um, you know, in the work setting. So if we have a boss, then what should be the attitude of the employee? Uh, he talks about, you know, uh, if there's a husband, then what should be the attitude of the wife? Uh, if there's a leader, what should be the attitude of those who follow the leader? So Peter talks a lot about this, and maybe uh, reading his epistles might help you. First Peter is, is a good epistle to study. So we get the understanding that we must be good followers. Uh, but at the same time, it's not telling us to come under their control. So there is there is that uh, border, um, Shani. So submission does not mean coming under someone's control. So we can still be our own person and uh, still exercise the freedom that God has given us and yet be fully submitted to the authority over our lives. So I, I, I just kind of summed it up. Do you have uh, follow-up questions to that? No, that, that that was good. Thank you. What I put in the chat, I was thinking you were, you were asking about in terms of um, why is it not good for, I guess, a pastor to be sitting. That's what I meant. I, I thought that because you say you didn't understand that. What I was trying to say was that like if somebody is sitting or pastor that's um, cheating on his wife or things like that, mm. I just thought there's a certain spirit that can get on the congregation. That's what I meant by that. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I was told. Uh, Yes, Shani. So when, uh, let's say, there is a weakness in the leader, and there's obviously, like, you know, especially when it comes to a spiritual leader, and they are sinning, that's very dangerous. That's very, very dangerous. Uh, and uh, yes, demonic spirits can enter through it. And there could be a, a spirit behind, you know, whatever you, you, the example that you gave just now, and that can affect people in the congregation. And you might find that they are doing the exact same thing that the pastor is doing. Okay, thank you, thank you. That clarifies. Yes. Yeah. So then, uh, as leaders, we have to be on the guard. So uh, it's it's a high call. It's a high call. Yes, I think we have addressed the questions in the chat and uh, we can just begin with so one question that just, just yes. there on my mind without taking a person's name. Uh -huh. See, uh, in the past, uh, there was a very uh, a famous uh, man of God who had a very successful uh, okay. ministry. Okay, so uh, there were a lot of people who followed his works and, uh, you know, his. Uh, his ministry yeah and uh, later when he moved on when he passed away and then they find out a lot of things which is not like yeah. fair so then uh, the way people responded was uh, uh, in shock yes. okay but honestly speaking that time do you actually nullify the way god worked through his life and the ministry and the people that he reached out that's yeah. the first question and the second question is like uh, as a believer as a child of god uh, no, the Bible also says, you know, don't uh, take the dust off somebody else's eye before you take it out of your own eye. So people were like very much, uh, you know, uh, on the thrust of, you know, uh, disapproving of what he did. And uh, yeah, that's that's fine. But yeah. uh, uh, we are like, are we not too judgmental on just the way he lived? And uh, yeah, sure. See, um, we. Uh, I, maybe I'll answer the second question first and then the first question. So the second question, when somebody is sinning, okay, um, yes, if you look up uh, James chapter 4, it says, do not judge a brother, right? Don't judge your brother. Uh, we see even in the teachings of Jesus, it says, like, you, you will be judged with the measure that you judge. The Bible has to be, like, when we read, uh, when, when we interpret it as, uh, you know, one thought is coming through. You have to see if there are opposing 
concepts in other parts of the Bible, right? So, okay, we get it that, okay, don't judge them uh, in, in an unbalanced way. That point we got. But when you look at the life of Jesus, you know, scriptures tell us that Jesus was anointed, Jesus was exalted because he loved what is good and he hated what is wrong. Think about this. Even Jesus, when something was wrong, he was upset about it. He did not cover it up. So then, can we judge an evil in another person's life? Answer is yes. We should get upset when we see something wrong in another person's life. But how do we address it? You know, as we discussed earlier, if it's somebody in leadership, there is there is a correct way of going about it. And we must speak the truth in love. Okay, speak the truth in love. So uh, uh, the answer is, it's okay to judge uh, Akhil. It's okay the to scenario, judge uh, the sin. The uh, sin, yeah. In, in the scenario, things came into light only after he passed away. So, yeah, but at least we are admitting that what happened was wrong. We should admit that. It just, just uh, remove all the works that he's done and all the books that he's written and uh, those things. Uh, yeah, so uh, see, one is we are clear on what is right and wrong. What happened is wrong. That should not have happened. Okay, That is one thing. Now, what do we do with his ministry? What do we do with his works? Now, we know, uh, you know, scriptures tell us, uh, I think it is uh, Romans 11, 29, the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. So gifts and callings come from God. And in the ministry, there could have been a lot of things said and done, which were genuinely from God. You got it? Yes, God used him as a vessel. And um, we don't have to burn all the writings. Yeah, we don't have to get rid of everything. But you see, the problem is, now when we read those books or when we listen to those sermons, we we may struggle to accept, right? Many of us, we are like, oh, why should we listen to this person? Because testimony is something. Once a person loses their testimony, it makes it that much harder for people to accept their ministry. Yeah. Yeah, God spoke through that person, Mike. In a scenario where you actually look at it on the different perspective as you know, like when you again go back and listen to some sermons. Huh. Now, it had a very good positive influence worldwide. So you can always take it like, you know, God spoke through him yeah, yeah. to people. And rather than just saying, no, no, I will no longer listen to this. And uh, yeah, yeah. See, God definitely worked okay, through but... the person. But again, it's each one's individual decision because some people may not be able to uh, uh, you know, when, when you think of that person, you don't feel like, like, how do you know? How do you know what he's saying is right? Like, you get all these doubts. So some people may, on purpose, not want to venture that side. So we let them be. Sister, can I say something? Yes, yes, Sister Gertrude. Uh, sister, see, when the person is alive, they didn't confront with his sin attitude or whatever. When the person dies, they are bringing all the allegations, but we don't know. I think like it could be a demonic uh, uh, attempt to bring down his ministry. Because if if they were right, they could have confronted when he was alive. Okay. No, I, I see your point. Uh, but also, if there is enough evidence, sister, that's why I was telling Akhil, if there is enough evidence and we know wrong has happened, then it's okay to, to admit that, yes, what happened was wrong, this person was wrong. Because it, it should be fine. Yeah, but, but thank you. I, I totally get what you're trying to uh, yes, sister. tell Thank us. you. Yes, thank you, sister. Uh, yes, Warren? Uh, yes, sister. I just want to say, you know, uh, this just incidents like this just go to prove to us, you know, no, ma no matter how close we are to God or how holy a person may seem to be, we are always prone to temptation and, you know, we have to always be on our guard. Uh, and, and, and the more we get closer to God, the, 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 the more the enemy wants to attack us and bring us down. Hmm. Okay. So, um, you're just sharing, no, Warren? It's not a question. Exactly. Yeah, I'm just sharing. Sorry. Yeah. yeah you're sharing. Yeah. So, uh, what Warren is saying, we we have to be on our guard. We have to be on our guard, especially when we are serving 
uh, in areas of responsibility and the lord is helping us rise up in responsibility yeah thank you for sharing that warren um shani yeah can you clarify i know it says to don't judge somebody but then you said it's okay to do it because you if somebody's sinning you're going to judge them so can you kind of clarify that because you had mentioned that earlier yeah see judging by judging i'm not saying that we are condemning a person but we are calling um right right and wrong wrong which is admitting right and wrong okay okay i think that okay it seems like if you're mending right and wrong is then kind of condemning them in a yeah way. so yes go ahead yeah i don't know if you're if you're t i don't know because some people if if they're doing something that's not right and you tell them it's not right isn't that they may think of that as kind of condemnation in a way i don't know that's kind of how i'm interpreting that a little bit okay um see that it needs a lot of wisdom there's a right way of approaching this and a right way of speaking the truth to them uh but someone has to address it uh shani and you know that i mean there are other scriptures that teach us that when we do this it will help them come out and lead a righteous life but the opposite of that okay now let's consider we don't correct someone we say okay yeah it's fine everything is fine keep going but that is flattery and uh, you know like just praising them despite the issues that is not correct no because then we are actually misleading the person okay so if they are if they're doing something that's not right just tell it i guess the way you approach it to it tell them but don't yes. actually tell them what don't keep badgering yes. about it and like telling them you know over and over again about it. is that what you're trying to say yes yes so when we do it with the right heart our intention is to help that person bring them out of that situation it's a good thing there's there's nothing wrong with judging the sin what they keep doing it see that's up to them there's only so much that we can do for each other but beyond that if that person is not willing to take responsibility then uh at least we did what we we are supposed to do okay so if they keep doing it just mm. leave it alone cuz you already told them the first yes. time it's in God's hands okay okay perfect clarifies things thank you thank you thank you okay some comments here in the chat Uh, okay, Sister Gertrude, but sometimes people judge after uh, people's death. Why not when a uh, person was alive? I think the evidence came out after the person died, and maybe that's why uh, you know the issue started. And uh, we don't judge the person. Sin, hate the sin. Okay, Sanjay says hate the sin, not the sinner. Great. All right. So, yeah, thank you class. It's uh, interesting as ever the teaching uh, you know and uh, spending time with all of you. Uh, let's close with a word of prayer and I want to request someone from our online batch to please pray before we end the class. anyone okay sister gertrude could you please lead us yes sister heavenly father we thank you for what we have learned today my master all the details my master to how to protect ourselves and defend ourselves and to uh, to have the warfare my master lord with the righteousness my master lord in our heart i pray that we will use all the uh, weapons that you have given us everything that you have taught us in detail my master to stand on your word and to take our rightful place my master to defend our family our church and our nation my lord 
I thank you for all that sister has taught us that we may practice it every day in our life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.